After finding a tomb in their house, two siblings unleash a sinister creature and use a jewel with cosmic powers to turn it into their pet monster. Today we're going to recap the story of the movie, Psycho Gorman, from 2020. In the grounds of a beautiful house, two siblings, Mimi and Luke, play a game of crazy ball, a game that looks a lot like tag. The competition is fierce, but Mimi manages to come out on top and wins the game. As punishment, the loser must dig a huge hole in the ground and despite Luke's complaints, he is forced to obey the deal. Suddenly, the boy hits a strange disc with a shiny gem in the middle. Mimi climbs down the hole to investigate the object, which has several buttons around it. She presses them all at random and the gem is released, but the light coming from the disc intensifies and the whole earth begins to shake. Frightened, the two climb into the hole and Luke throws earth down to cover everything. The tremors have stopped, but the siblings are afraid that something monstrous might come out of it. Before the two of them can talk about what happened, their parents, Susan and Greg, call them back home because it's time to go to bed. Even so, Luke can't sleep, and neither can Mimi, who has the shiny gem and is trying to understand what this mysterious object is. Without them realizing it, minutes later, the hole glows again and a monstrous hand emerges from it. The creature then gets up and walks down a long path until it reaches an abandoned warehouse. Inside, there are three thieves who have just arrived after robbing a family's house. However, the leader of the group complains to his partners that they have stolen things of no value, like a picture frame. Furious, the guy throws the object back, which is caught by the creature that has come out of the hole. Despite its frightening appearance, the leader of the group is not intimidated and tells the monster to get out of there. In response, the creature throws a punch that knocks him away and then pulls out the other two henchmen, using its power of telekinesis. The monster shows no mercy and effortlessly removes the thieves' heads at the same time. Seeing this, the leader despairs and pulls out a penknife to defend himself, but his fear is so great that he drops the weapon. The bandit begs for his life, but the creature doesn't heed his request and ends him too. The next day, the family goes to the house and finds a huge hole. The couple have no idea who did it, but their children suspect that something, or someone, came out of it after they removed the gem. The two agree to investigate what happened when they get back from school. Later, the siblings return to the hole and follow the tracks, which lead them to an old shoe factory. After exploring for a while, Mimi and Luke are startled to see human remains there, as if they were decorative items. Seconds later, the monster that came out of the hole appears in front of them and sets out to attack the children. Luke despairs and tries to run away, but the creature manages to trap him with its telekinesis. Mimi orders the monster to put her brother down and, for some unexpected reason, the creature obeys her without question. The boy is released and soon realizes that a gem is shining inside Mimi's coat. The monster recognizes the gem and says it's the jewel of Praxidice, the only artifact capable of controlling him. Upon learning this information, the girl decides to put it to the test and orders the monster to use its power to spin Luke through the air. Left with no choice, he obeys her and the poor boy spins like a top, because of his sister's prank. With the jewel's power proven, the girl tells the monster to reveal its name and it claims to be an alien, known as the Archduke of Nightmares. The siblings don't like this name and decide to come up with a better one for their newest pet monster. After a lot of brainstorming, the two decide to call him Psycho Gorman. With the name chosen, Mimi and Luke decide to go home, but first, the girl orders the alien to sit in the factory until they return. Again, the monster is forced to obey, but he promises that if the two of them lose the jewel, he will break free and punish them for it. Mimi pays no attention to the threats and tells Luke that she will teach PGA a few tricks before introducing him to the world. Far away, on a ship in outer space, a council made up of aliens from different planets detects the Archduke's awakening. They fear that the galaxy is in danger and the leader of the council, the Templar Pandora, says she will find the monster and eliminate it forever. She then asks one of her robots to bring a specimen of Earth's dominant race, and it transports a young human girl to the ship. Not understanding how she ended up there, the young woman becomes nervous, and to make matters worse, the Templar crushes her with a laser prison and uses her remains to assume a human disguise. Meanwhile, on Earth, Mimi, Luke and their school friend Alistair go to the shoe factory to see the monster. When they get there, their friend is startled by the creature's appearance, except that it is still under the jewel's control. Luke then asks who he really is and PG says that, a long time ago, he was a servant on the planet called Gigix. He and others of his race were controlled by the Templars, the same as Pandora's race. However, one day, while digging, PG found the jewel of Praxidice and merged with it, becoming a being with immense powers. Thanks to this, he single-handedly wiped out all the Templars living on the planet and gathered an army to control the world. 
However, his thirst for power led him to invade other worlds, which forced other aliens to join forces with the Templars to fight him. After an arduous battle, PG was defeated and the Templars imprisoned him in a tomb, next to his gem, so that he would be buried on Earth forever. The children listen to the story, but soon get bored and decide to go home. Before leaving, Mimi leaves PG a homework assignment, to watch TV all day so that he can learn to be more fun with people. The three of them then leave, unaware that the alien is able to use the TV to transmit a secret message to his minions. Later, Alistair is invited to dinner at the sibling's house, which makes Mimi anxious to spend more time with the boy, but he prefers to play video games with Luke. The girl is annoyed at having to play alone and decides to summon PG to her house. The alien arrives and Luke panics at the sight of him, but Mimi doesn't care and orders PG to make Alistair spend more time with her. The alien obeys the order and transforms the boy into a huge mutant brain, which will accompany Mimi wherever she wants to go. If that wasn't crazy enough, her parents see the monster through the window and set off to save their children. Susan takes a baseball bat and hits PG, who doesn't suffer any damage from the blow. He threatens to eliminate the couple for this, but Mimi stops him and tells him that from now on he will be the family friend and will live with them in their house. Then, under the girl's control, PG is forced to play drums in their band, buy clothes and even stop his father from sneaking the cookies. A few days later, Mimi, Luke and their monster are in the cafeteria and the girl tells her brother to give her his fries. Luke refuses, but he knows he can't face his sister and ends up giving in. Seeing this, PG realizes that he can use the boy to get the gem out of Mimi and finally free himself. When night comes, the monster uses its ability to invade nightmares and enters Luke's mind. The boy finds himself in front of a graveyard, with the zombies crawling towards his bed. Shortly afterwards, PG appears and tells the boy to take Mimi's jewel. Otherwise, other beings will come to Earth in search of it and everyone who lives on the planet will suffer the consequences. However, the boy refuses, because he knows that if the monster gets free, his whole family will be in danger. PG then leaves the boy's mind, but leaves the proposal open in case he changes his mind. The next day, Mimi gathers Luke, PG and Alistair to play crazy ball. While she's explaining the rules, a car appears and out of it come two policemen, who point their guns at the monster. Without thinking twice, they fire several shots at the alien who, unluckily for them, has a body immune to bullets. PG then reverses the attack and grabs the hand of one of them, who begins to undergo a grotesque transformation. Finally, the policeman turns into a deformed zombie, who from now on will obey PG's orders. When he sees this, his colleague is terrified and runs away, while the brothers are also frightened, but Mimi soon turns her attention back to the game. After the match, she, Luke, PG and the zombie policemen go for a walk in the woods and start talking about feelings. PG says that he has only known hatred and suffering throughout his life and asks the siblings what love is. Luke tries to explain, only for Mimi to reply that love is only for losers. The boy retorts that his sister is lying because he knows she loves Alistair, despite having turned him into a mutant brain. The girl doesn't like the provocation at all and tells PG to eliminate her own brother. The monster then sets out to attack him, but the girl soon changes her mind and says she only wanted to scare Luke. After this joke, the group continues on their way through the forest, but Luke is annoyed by his sister's attitude and takes PG's proposal more seriously. Minutes later, at the police station, the policeman who escaped from the monster tells his partner what happened, but no one believes his story. Soon afterwards, Pandora, disguised as a human, enters the police station and wants to know the whole story. But before waiting for the police officer to tell her everything, she uses her power to absorb the memories from his mind. Far away, Mimi and the rest of the group continue walking in the forest, but are approached by five aliens. They soon reveal that they are PG's followers, who answered his call on television. The alien is happy to see them and orders the group to finish off the siblings and recover the jewel of Praxidice. However, they deny this order, because in PG's absence, they have become the new masters of Gigix and have made an alliance with the Templars. This act of betrayal causes PG to turn on his former companions and provoke them all into combat. However, Mimi orders him to stay put, as punishment for asking the group of aliens to eliminate her and her brother. With this order, the monster can do nothing and his group of followers seize the chance to attack him. They hit him with spears, stones, spinning kicks and even wrestling moves. The beating continues and then Mimi makes the monster an offer. If he apologizes, she'll let him go free to fight. PG doesn't accept because of his pride, but in the face of the humiliation, he decides to apologize to the girl. Mimi accepts the apology and, with the jewel in her hands, she orders the alien to counterattack. Thanks to this, 
RPG's full power is unleashed and he prepares for the second round. One by one, the alien attacks his former colleagues with punches, kicks and powerful magic. To his surprise, the zombie cop also enters the fray to take revenge on PG for deforming him. He then pulls out his gun and fires at the alien, only for it to use the metal body of one of its opponents to protect itself. Seconds later, he takes the opportunity to hit the metal alien's weak point, piercing its body through a small glass opening. One has already been eliminated, but soon after, one of the group uses her magic against PG, which causes his head to separate from his body. Even so, this isn't enough to defeat the alien, who pulls his head back and uses magic to disintegrate his opponent's body. One more has been defeated and now it's the turn of the guard, who continues to fire his gun, but without doing any damage to PG. Then the monster takes two pieces of wood and shoves them into the policeman's eyes, finally putting him out of his misery. Now there are three aliens left and one of them soon sets out to attack PG. To his misfortune, the psycho knows his weak spot and rips out his vital organ, which looks a lot like a rose. With three of his friends defeated, all that remains is the golden-bodied alien and the leader of the group, who wears a crown. PG eliminates the former by summoning a hole in the ground, from which comes a huge claw, which rips off the man's face, while the latter lies on the ground, powerless to defend himself. The fight is over and PG decides to give his former companion an elimination worthy of a warrior. According to the tradition of his people, this elimination is done by devouring his enemy and PG does it, which makes Luke sick, while Mimi is impressed. PG emerged victorious in the end, but he soon realizes that he has been seriously injured. The siblings try to help him, but they don't have enough strength to carry him back to the factory. Then PG sends a telepathic message to their father, Greg, just when the man is in the bathroom. Even so, he agrees to help and drives to pick up the group and take them back home. They finally arrive, only to find Susan waiting for them in front of the house, along with the Templar Pandora. The warrior orders them to leave the monster in her custody, but Mimi refuses and tells Luke to deal with the mysterious woman. However, the boy has had enough of his sister's orders and, as well as refusing to help her, he decides to stand by his mother and the Templar. The situation becomes tense and Susan tells her husband to bring Mimi and let the monster be taken away. However, faced with his daughter's pleas, he decides to help and the three of them set off in a car towards the factory. When they get there, PG has run out of steam and says that the only way to save himself is for the girl to give him Praxidice's jewel. The girl is in doubt about what to do, because she knows that if she gives up the gem, she and her family will be in danger. While she's making this decision, back home, Pandora gives Susan a mysterious liquid and tells her that she'll need her and Luke's help to capture the Archduke. Moments later, Mimi finally makes up her mind and decides to give the jewel to PG, provided he promises to spare her and her family's lives. The alien accepts the deal and the girl goes to give him the jewel, but realizes that he doesn't have it. Suddenly, Pandora appears in the factory, along with Luke, who reveals that he took the jewel from his sister, and Susan, who has also become a Templar. Faced with this impasse, the trio begin to face each other in a battle for the fate of the Earth. Susan attacks Greg for helping the monster escape, while Luke and Mimi settle their differences. Finally, Pandora takes advantage of PG's weakness and traps him in her laser cage. The fight intensifies and Mimi manages to overpower her brother and is about to attack him. At that moment, Luke tells the girl that she is the real monster and is to blame for everything that is happening. Next to them, Pandora prepares to deliver the final blow, but PG tells her that, according to Templar law, she must give her rival a fair fight. Unable to go against the rules of her people, she agrees and tells the alien to choose how the fight will go. However, he leaves this choice to Mimi, who decides to solve everything with her favorite game, Crazy Ball. So two teams are formed, Mimi, Greg and PG, against Luke, Susan and Pandora. The match begins and everyone tries to hit balls at the opposing team, but Luke's team soon gains the upper hand. After a lot of tension, there's only one point left to play for. Mimi and Luke stand in the center of the arena and decide to settle their differences once and for all. The two throw the balls to hit each other, but in the middle of the contest, they both throw the balls at the same time and they collide with each other. According to the rules, when this happens, they must resolve it by exchanging punches, meaning that whoever punches the other first is the winner. The two prepare for the final battle and go on the attack, only for Mimi to once again prove superior to her brother and hit him with a punch to the stomach. Thanks to this blow, the girl's team wins, but Pandora doesn't accept defeat and draws her sword to attack PG. Mimi gets in front, but the villain doesn't hesitate to attack her, forcing Susan to protect her daughter with her Templar armor. Seeing her mother in danger, Mimi asks Luke to return the gem so that PG can recover, but the boy refuses. 
Then, for the first time in her life, Mimi apologizes to her brother in an emotional song, and Luke returns the gem to her. The situation, however, only gets worse and Pandora pushes Susan away, as well as taking away her Templar powers. The boy's mother returns to normal and receives help from her husband, but the villain intends to finish them all off right there. She then prepares her sword, only to be stopped by a strange magic. Then PG appears, who has recovered the jewel thanks to the siblings and has merged with it again. Now, with his powers restored, the alien challenges the Templar to a final fight. The warrior accepts and sets out to attack him, but PG dodges the blow and begins to remove various parts of Pandora's body. With this, he creates a sword made of flesh and the two begin their duel. The fight is fierce, but PG uses his maximum strength and manages to destroy the Pandora sword with a single blow. The duel ends with PG winning and the siblings celebrate with a hug of reconciliation. Finally, the alien tells Pandora that he will give her an elimination worthy of a warrior and, as Luke and Mimi know what this means, they take their parents far away. Seconds later, everyone meets PG outside the factory. The monster is free to do as he pleases, however, he decides to keep his promise and assures Mimi and her family that he will leave them alive, because it is thanks to them that the monster has finally discovered love. PG then says goodbye to everyone and opens a portal that takes him to another part of the city. He then starts destroying everything around him, but Mimi and her family don't care because they know they're safe and decide to go home. Also safe is Alistair, who remains in his mutant brain form. Without realizing what he has become, his parents call him to dinner while they watch the news announcing the end of the world at the hands of the alien known as the Psycho Gorman. So what did you think of this movie? Leave it in the comments below. And if you liked the video, like and subscribe for more movie recaps. See you next time.